Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we're going to be talking about the principal residence exemption and uh, the conditional rescission of that exemption. So joining me today is Orion Township's treasurer and running for state representative next year, Donnie Steele. Without further ado, let's get Donnie on to join us. Hi, Hello. Donnie. How are you? Hi, Tracy. Good. Thanks for having me Good. today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad that you could join us today and talk a little bit about um, the principal residence exemption. And I think a lot of people don't know that there is a conditional rescission for that. Some people think it's either on, you know, put on your home or you have to take it off. But there is a period of time where you can conditionally uh, rescind that where you actually can have your homestead exemption on two homes at once. <laughs> there are some people that don't realize that what you pay in homeowners taxes, if the home that you're living in is your primary residence and you file your principal residence exemption, you actually get a discount on your taxes. So taxes are actually higher. So businesses and you know those who have properties that are rentals they're actually paying a, a higher tax amount because that's actually where the tax level is but as it being your primary home you get an exemption which brings down and reduces your taxes so and and that's right for so for sorry so for or orion township it's 18 mils difference so it's a it's a it's a huge difference that is between the home set and home set. that's a very big difference and it does vary based on township city location what the mills are and that's a that's a conversation for another day as far as calculating what your what your taxes are but what we wanted to talk about today is you can only have your um your your exemption on one home it has to be your primary residence and that is that's throughout the state of michigan you get to have one home that's your primary residence um, so when you're in the process of moving sometimes people will You'll be able to find your new home first and purchase that prior to selling your existing home. Um, so there is something called a conditional rescission where you can benefit from that discount as well as your future buyers can. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? I can, and I actually have an example of a form, and I got okay. it from Oakland County because Oakland County does our assessing. And the beauty of this is if you have... Um, two houses, like let's say you 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 were afraid to sell your house because you didn't want to be houseless, that you went out and you bought another house and that's going to be your primary residence and then you move into that house but you haven't sold your um, previous house yet, um, you are able to have the, um, the principal resident exemption on both homes for a period of up to three years. So it's really... They give you a huge grace period, and there's just a couple conditions in which you have to follow. But mainly, um, both houses have to be in the state of Michigan. You can't have one in Florida in one year. That's number one. Um, number two, you cannot lease out the house, and you cannot use it for a business. Uh, the house has to be vacant. And number three, you have to have the house um, for sale, and it has to be actively um, up for sale, and you have to show proof of that um, as part of the application process. And of course, you have to fill out the application. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then turn that in. And you have to turn it in by June 1st um, or November 1st for uh, that year. And then you have to make sure you have it in by the end of the year for the next year and the end of the year for the next year for a total of three years that you're allowed to have this. Okay. And that's really the, that's really the meat of it. And I just um, want to say that right now the market's super, super hot and it's not necessarily what people would say, Oh, I would never have two houses in this market right, right now, but this was designed for when the market was super, super terrible and people were sitting on two houses for a very long time. And then when you finally did have a buyer, um, it, the taxes were so high, it actually scared buyers, potential buyers away. Right. Well, and that's, and that is a very good point. That is something that when you are marketing your home for sale, you want to make it appealing to the largest number of buyers. And so if your taxes become non-homesteaded and they increase um, significantly, that means that's more 
cash out of pocket that that buyer has to have in order to get into the home for that first year. Um, so if they need to have more money to get into a home, one home versus needing less to get into another one, you know, that could make or break whether or not they can move, move forward. So. Agreed. Agreed. So. For and then if, yeah. If they fill this out, they can just turn it in to the township and we'll make sure that the assessor gets it to make sure that they, um, don't get it, that this doesn't get removed to where they have to pay the higher taxes. Right. That's fantastic. It's just, and it's something to make sure that the form does get filled out. So um, right now we're, we're already past June 1st. So everything, you know, if you, you're planning to sell your home, you already purchased the new home, you're good un, until November 1st. But prior to November 1st, you want to make sure if you still haven't sold your home. Um, now, what about for those that if they, they bought a new home, but they haven't listed it for sale yet, it, can they just fill out the form when they're ready to list it, just to, it, like if we're getting close to that deadline, just to make sure? Pro Okay. Yeah, probably. And you just and then the and then the form, like I said earlier, they just has to be shown that you are um, definitely have it up for sale and okay. that you have to show proof of ownership. But like, like you said, getting ready and finding the form and making sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. that preliminary stuff always <laughs> really helps out a lot. And yep. just, you know, surprisingly, even in this market, um, we had a couple of phone calls of houses that didn't have the homestead exemption. And it made it very it was difficult for the buyers because they have to prorate and they have to pay those um, taxes up front. And there was, a, we had a multitude of calls of like, you know, are they sure, are you sure they're that high? And yeah, they're that high through the end of the year. So with right. that extra um, uh, homestead on it, so. Yes, and that's something that, that you know, some buyers do not know. Um, of course, if they work with a realtor that will educate them throughout the process, um, Yet the homestead taxes because you're paying at the rate that the previous homeowner was at. So if it's become non-homesteaded and they're paying at the full rate, then that as the new buyer, what you will pay until your homestead exemption gets filed for that next taxable season. So agreed. Agreed. And if you have any questions about, you know, the form or where they stand or what are the per current taxes right now or what they're going to be next year, um, call Orion Township Treasurer's Department if it's in Orion. And we can certainly answer those questions. Uh, we have a great staff and we can look them up instantly and answer those questions. And that's what we do all day long is answer these questions for realtors, for title companies, for buyers for sellers and um you know i always we always feel bad when the realtor doesn't educate these new buyers about the homestead the non-homestead the transfer affidavit um and what the prorations are going to be and what are the future taxes going to be um the good realtors educate them so i appreciate you putting these messages out tracy because it helps us a lot well thank you and i appreciate you coming on and we've had you and others from your staff and we really appreciate you coming on and sharing that information um i know it's it's always disappointing i had uh last year i had a referral come to me but they came after june 1st and you know i asked them why they hadn't filled out the uh the conditional rescission and they had no idea they weren't informed and so doing videos like this, even if for some reason, uh, you know, I'm not working with somebody, I'm, I'm happy to get the information out there. I want to make sure that everybody has good information and can make informed decisions. So awesome. So, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Anything else that you want? Um, well, you know, and then I just, I, one quick thing is if they don't turn in their principal resident exemption or their transfer affidavit, there's actually a fine that they can be charged for not turning that within um, the period of time, which is allowed, which is um, within 45 days. So right. uh, that that's the transfer affidavit. So when they sell, when the, when the seller sells, they need to make sure that they turn that in, in a timely manner yes. um, as well. So. Yep, we, we always have the, the transfer affidavit and the principal residence exemption um, at closing. We always give clients and the title companies, you know, we put those right on the top and say, if you can do it today, go do it today. Don't even wait, even though you do have 45 days, you know, paperwork gets set aside. You want to make sure that you get it done as soon as possible. So, 
So that was my last, that was my last comment. So all right, nothing else to add. So thanks, well, Tracy. Thank you so much, Donnie. I appreciate you joining us today and appreciate your information. And we'll have to have you back on again at some point in the future to talk a little bit more about this uh, running for state representative. That's very exciting. Oh, so thank you. Yes. <laughs> thanks. So. Thanks for the shout out on that. I appreciate it. So thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next Tuesday at 12 on TV Tracy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.